Though Spike was relieved to finally see Twilight and Celestia again, after what felt like an eternity, he couldn't help but feel worried away. They had all the means to get rid of the homicidal pink lunatic, but they still had no way to use it against her effectively. From what they told him at dinner, the one time they tried proved fruitless. Lying down while they continued to plunge ahead into the night brought a twing of guilt as he slowly closed his eyes. He should help them. He had to help them. It was the only right thing to do. And yet, everything he tried to do just kept failing. As usual, Twilight's suggestion to get some rest was probably correct. He was still young, and hopefully he'd be able to get some of the old day. Only a moment passed after the little dragon had laid his head down on his pillow, before he was asleep. Any questions he had about growing old jumped out to the forefront of his mind just as quickly. Spike! He snapped up in a second. His mind hadn't had enough time to wander as he saw himself still sitting in the library. Frantically, he searched for the source of the furious voice that had come to dread. It was an unmistakable one. The word echoed again. Spike! The dragon trembled out of bed, slamming his shoulder onto the floor. He clawed his way back to his feet, wheezing in terror. His heart had begun to beat like a drum. He could feel every muscle in his small body tightening as he slowly turned around, hoping beyond hope that it was simply his imagination running wild. His gaze came across the window just above Twilight's bed, when it suddenly blew open and a freezing gust that bit his scales. Through the pitch black outside, a pair of hate-filled blue eyes emerged. Their pink owner glided into the bedroom and set herself down gently on the wooden floors, the window slumming shut as she landed. Spike's own pupils became pinpricks as his terrified reality set in. He tried to move his feet, to make a break for it, regardless of how futile it may prove to be. But he was glued to the floor. Pinky coldly stared down at her target as she approached. You just had to do it, didn't you? She asked as she broke off a piece of her flat mane and straightened it into a makeshift blade. W what are you t t talking about? Don't play games with me, Spike! I've had a busy yet unproductive night tonight. I tell you what I'm going to guilt trip Twilight into giving herself to me, and then suddenly I can't seem to finish any pony off. Aside from Twilight and the princess, who else would know how to get away from me? Huh? Pinky jabbed her snout into his as she ranted, knocking the baby dragon onto his back. You told them! You told them how to get away from me if I showed up. And after all I did for you, like letting you live, she growled, grabbing his head and poking at his neck with her dagger. Look at it this way, kiddo. You'll see your precious werewity again. Won't that be nice? Just as she was about to strike and end his short life, Spike shouted out in a panic. It was Private Eye! Private Eye! It was enough for the killer to pause. But she had no reason to believe him. She did know every pony in Ponyville including the detective. Curious, she raised an eyebrow and slackened her grip on the weapon. Private Eye? What's he got to do with anything? He, he, he's been the one investigating things ever since what happened to Applejack. I helped him and the princess keep in touch with, uh, with about all this while she and Twilight were away. He's the one who came up with the idea, not me, I swear. With an icy glare, she considered what the shaking dragon told her. It did make a bit of sense. He was a cop, and if he was the most involved with the victims, particularly the former elements, then it's understandable that he'd want to keep in touch with the princess, especially if she was guarding Twilight. Besides, the citizenry would be more likely to listen to an officer of the law about something so serious rather than an immature dragon that was known to occasionally blow things out of proportion. You know, kiddo, I believe you. I really do. Her sudden, strangely calm demeanor quickly evaporated. But that still means you helped him out! Without a second thought, Pinky drove her main made blade into Spike's soft neck. In his bed, the little dragon clawed at his new wound and struggled against his unseen assailant. His strangled, bloody gasps for life, and the re relentless creaks of the wicker basket, caught Twilight's attention downstairs, and for a moment, she felt her harp stop. A final sickening gurgle set off alarms in her head. 
The book she was reading fell to the floor with a thud as she raced upstairs. From the far side of the room, the princess's ears swiveled when she heard the sound of frantic clopping of hooves on the floor. She trot into the lobby to see Twilight's tail disappear from sight as she galloped to the top of the stairs. Twilight? Private Eye paced behind the suspect as he sat at the table in the interrogation room. The cocky scumbag knew where the drugs came from. It was only a matter of time before he'd spilled the beans one way or another. The detective felt like he had to, had to ask the same question three times repeatedly for what must have been an eternity, and it was getting him nowhere. Despite being in a similar situation more times than he can count, something just felt off. Sick of wasting time with the despicable Pegasus, Private Eye lunged for the winged pony's neck and picked him up by his chair, violently kicking him over onto the counter. The look he shot the criminal could have killed him. You're going to tell me where you got the stuff and you're going to tell me now. Do you hear me? I'm sick of wasting my time with you. All right, all right, fine. You've got me. I'll tell you who gave them to me. The suspect sneered. He pointed at one, the one-way mirror by the entrance of the room. They're right over there. The officer turned his head to the reflection, not quite sure what he was supposed to see. He gasped when he found himself standing there, holding Pinkie Pie in his hooves, smiling at him. A quick shot to the gut followed by a hard uppercut, knocking the detective to the ground. The murderer flew into a rage and launched herself at Private Eye but he quickly blocked her with a hind hoof, shoving her away and against the wall. He got to his hooves and blocked another incoming right hook, countering with a fast jab to the snout. With lightning-fast speed, he grabbed her by one of her haunches, as well as her throat. His hatred for Pinky over what she had done came to a boil. He growled, letting loose his fury, picking her up into the air and slamming her head into the table, splitting it in two. You picked the wrong pony to come after you, maniac! He spat. The stunned mare could only laugh at his efforts. Oh, this is going to be fun! I haven't had any pony stand up to me like this in a long while. The quick buck, uh, a quick buck to the shin, brought Private Eye to his knees. Ugh! With a smirk, Pinky spun and got back up. She grabbed the hardened cop by the shoulders. He grabbed onto hers, battling for control, but his injured leg gave her just enough leverage. Using his bad leg as a launching pad, she swung her body around and took his with her, tossing him through the mirror like a rag doll. Come on, come on, wake up, damn it! His wife shook him as hard as she could as he laid in bed, when Private Eye was rocking, rocketing through the air and slamming into the wall in the other room. If he was conscious, he would have felt two of his ribs crack. The hard landing on the floor would have knocked him out as well. Pinky walked out of the wall into the interrogation room and snatched up the detective by the throat. One question, he hissed, spitting blood. What finally tipped you off? She answered with a depraved smile that made his skin crawl. Spike, hope you two shared a special moment or something at some point. Huh? Let's just say he won't be sending any more letters. As her response sunk in, he became lost in his anger. Seething, he grabbed Pinkie Pie's skull and struck her with a vicious headbutt, causing her to drop him. You witch! He was just a kid! Every pony dies, bucko! You of all ponies should know that. Ugh. He galloped full speed at the evil mare and tackled her to the floor, throttling Pinkie with one livid punch after another. She shook every one without missing a beat and caught his muzzle with a swing of her own. As he stumbled back, Pinky stood up, turned around and bucked him in the chest, knocking most of the wind out of him and sending him careening into the lobby of his nocturnal police station. Private Eye's slumbering body was thrown across the room as he continued to fight in the dream. When he came to a stop, his wife, thinking quickly, darted around to her side of the bed where the lantern sat. She snatched the glass piece from its stand and shattered it against the nightstand. The detective did wake Spike not long ago by sticking him with a letter opener, but there was no time to run and grab one from his office down the hall. Plus, there was no telling what might happen if she left him alone, even for a second. 
Quickly surveying the damage, she spotted a larger shard of glass and took it into her struggling husband. She approached carefully, not wanting to accidentally injure herself or him in the process. A sudden swing of his forelimb made her jump back and steady herself for a better opportunity. While his wife fought against the clock, Private Eye and Pinky continued to bawl. They found themselves twisting and spinning around in each other's grip, banging into nearly everything in the way. As they made their way into one of the desks on the dark station, Private Eye had slid a leg between hers and kicked out from under her. She felt uh, and smashed her head square onto the corner, black bile seeping out instead of blood. Gah! <clears throat> that smarts! Not bad! <sighs> and the cop jumped onto the mare's back, cutting off her unnecessary mockery. As Pinky tried to buck the cop off, she took a moment to rub her eye, restoring it back to his normal state. Despite deep down knowing that she could dispose of Private Eye at any time, she continued to struggle against him. The fight was a rush she hadn't felt for quite some time. So what harm was there in dragging it out a bit? She reached back but couldn't quite get a hold of him. Each time she tried to smash the buck on the back of her head into his muzzle, he dodged out of the way, usually getting a mouthful of mane for his trouble. All she seemed to receive for her trouble was another punch in the jaw. Sick of the attacks, Pinky dove an elbow into his side as hard as she could, sending him sliding off of her. Still, he refused to let go of the bits of her mane loose from his teeth, and caused her to twist her neck awkwardly. Private Eye's wife finally saw the chance. He laid on the floor, a limb reaching out for empty air. Using her earth pony strength, she held down her husband by his stomach and quickly jabbed at his hindquarters with the glass, being careful not to dive it in too deep. He howled in pain as he woke from his nightmare, several pink strands of hair flying from his mouth. He collapsed to his limbs on the floor and saw his wife sitting over him. Scared half to death that either she or Pinky had hurt him, he, once he caught his breath, he sat up and rubbed his aching head. You okay? His mare asked. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Prinky's revelation found its way into his mind, and a somber ache crept into the pit of his stomach. Spike. What about him? He didn't want to believe it, but Pinky hadn't lied to them yet. Every single time she had kept her word. There was no reason for him to think differently now. The detective's hanging head told the wife everything. No. She sobbed into a hoof and let the tears come. Spike had become a welcome addition to their home, a reliable friend even if it was only for a short while. Now all that was left was a memory. As he gazed sadly at his distraught wife, he spied something strange on the carpet, as well as on one of his legs. Long, straight strands of hair, pink ones. There was only one pony they could belong to. He replayed the last few moments of the fight in his mind, trying to piece together how in the world they could have been here. With a gasp, the answer came to him. One by one, he seized the hairs and ran like a bullet for the bedroom door. W where are you going? She asked through her tears. To the library. What? To Twilight and Celestia. <laughs>